of fighting the fight of faith. And he says, look, some people have shipwrecked their faith. And ultimately, the context of his prayer call is this, y'all. He knows that only prayer, intercession. Y'all with me here? You guys still with me? Let me get an amen. amen. You guys still with me? Amen. He knows only prayer is going to keep the church holy. Or let me rephrase that. He knows that prayer is where the church begins with holiness. Because it's by, the, it's by walking in the spirit that we are holy. Galatians 5. Walk by the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of your flesh. You won't give in to your sinful, destructive addictions. Live by the spirit and you'll have power in your life. But Paul knows the more you pray and the more you get into the word, the more you have power in your life. Because many times people say, well, pastor, how do I walk in the spirit? It sounds like some kind of mysterious thing, you know? Do you have to go and, 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 and chant like the Gregorian monks? Uh, do you have to fast for 50 days? No. Romans 8, verses 1 through 7. When you get a chance to read it, Paul tells us how to walk in the spirit. And he says it simply, it's, it's this simple. He says, those who walk in the spirit have their... Come on now. I know we got some Bible students in here. Those who walk in the spirit, Romans 8, I believe it's... Let me turn there real quick. Come on, I better get to, where my Bible scholar is at. Romans 8, verse 5. Look what it says. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set. Have what set? Those who walk according to the sinful nature, the flesh, that inner part of you that's destructive and sinful. When you're walking according to that power, it's because your mind is set on human earthly things. And then he says, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what? 